uh, this little canyon. I believe that they are excavating now. Uh, we can see them just slightly over there among the rocks, excavating and screening the material. We have our cameras, of course, set up just across from the buffalo jump, which you can see in the background. We've heard a lot, Dr. Maloof, about buffalo jumps in recent months. They've been in the newspapers and on our radio. And, of course, they are almost peculiar to Montana. Would you give us your archaeologist definition of a jump, or, or Indian sociologist definition? A buffalo jump is simply a location where Indians in prehistoric times drove buffalo over a cliff in order to uh, demolish them or, or kill them for the purpose of getting their hides and their meat and bones for resources in the camp. You mentioned prehistoric. I have wondered uh, how long, for how long a time did the Indians use the jumps? For approximately 4,000 years, Montana Indians have been using these jumps. Some were used recently, some in old times, some all through these periods. Now that's a long time before the Indians acquired the horse in Montana. Did the uh, buffalo jumps go out of usage after the Indians acquired the horse? For the most part, they did. You still hear stories about the last buffalo jump, and there have been some movies on it, but the old-time buffalo jump it took a lot of preparation from Indians uh, and the uh, ceremonies that took place, the communal activity. Those days were gone upon the arrival of the horse about 1730. Thereafter, the surround method became a lot more important. Uh, how did they use these jumps? We can see the cliffs here in the background. Uh, did they did they gather the buffalo back up on the hill and then drive them off? They had to have a big grazing area up in back of the jump where the animals would collect. Then it took uh, some very clever management to get them down over the proper part of the cliff which they desired. Then there's the jump, and then. Uh, they would uh, have to sometimes uh, finish them off with arrows or spears if they were not totally killed from the jump itself. What tribes, uh, you of course mentioned the prehistoric period and then the post-horse period, we might call it, what tribes use these buffalo jumps? We don't know what tribes use these jumps for the simple reason that most tribes uh, east of the Continental Divide in Montana came in after 1600, which uh, about the time the horse arrived. There's a good uh, bit of evidence, though, that uh, the Kootenai, the Ponderay, and the Flathead made uh, great use of these drives. We might also add the Shoshone, who once dominated central Montana. You have mentioned these tribes, and most of them are Montana tribes. Does this mean that we don't have jumps outside of this area near the Rocky Mountains? That's an interesting thing. The jump is fairly peculiar to Montana simply because we have an adequate number of cliffs for the Indians to have used for this purpose. Uh, east uh, of here in the Dakotas and Wyoming, they drove them over a hill and then built a corral down below. So that the jumps are peculiar to Montana and a little bit in southern Alberta and a little bit in Wyoming and occasionally here and there in other western states. but. In the great abundance, Montana is unique for its buffalo jumps. I'd indicate that we should have one uh, reserved for uh, the future, something along the lines of a state monument or a state park. We have been advocating that a state monument be set up where a buffalo jump can be preserved for future observation and the enjoyment of the people of Montana. Well, Dr. Maloof, I just noticed that our crew down here excavating is ready to go now. Uh, let's go down and visit them. Uh, here, Mr. Barry, is one of the pits that we have excavated right below the jump where the animals fell and rolled. We're some uh, 150 feet or so below the lip of, or the brim of the ledge, and uh, the animals fell over that precipice and then rolled down into these uh, lower slopes right here. We have a pit that's been excavated by some of the boys, which is approximately five feet deep, and uh, in here we found numerous bone levels. 
you can see perhaps some of the bones sticking out. Uh, Lou, uh, Mr. Lou Napton, one of the students in the class. Now, Lou, would you point out the bone layers there, some of those upper layers? Here, <clears throat> the uh, bone layers are right along in here. There's another right, very pronounced one right here, and then we find another one deeper down at about three feet deep. Do the, uh, does the depth of the bone layers, as he indicated them here, have anything to do with the length of time that the jump has been used? The depth is no indication of time because uh, there can be rapid deposition or there can be slow deposition. So the number of layers uh, itself doesn't indicate the age. However, some of the other pits that have been dug into this uh, have some points of a considerably aged time or old time going back perhaps three, four thousand years at most. In this particular pit we haven't found much in the way of specimens except for a lot of bones. However, we've been after information and uh, we've been able to learn a great deal about buffalo jumps from even a little pit like this. What did they uh, do here? Now we'll just review that again. Uh, and from and from here, did they go on down to the campsite, or how did they operate? Could you explain that a little bit? Here the animals evidently stopped rolling, and then the Indians would butcher the animals, leaving sometimes whole carcasses. And evidently, they preferred the bulls and the calves. We found uh, on the top of this, for example, a completely, uh, or at least partially articulated backbone. They would take off the skins, the tongues out of the animals, You'll note, uh, Mr. Barry, that some of these bones are quite uh, large. Here, for example, is one that just has rotted away rather than being broken up. But when we get down to the campsite down below, you'll notice they're all broken up in little pieces, indicating that these people uh, move the animals, or at least part of the animals, down below for our final you butchering. You call, you call that the occupation site that we have here in the... That's right. It was that, that's where they live. We can call it an occupation site or a campsite. Well, let's go down and take a look at that uh, site, Mr. Berry. This is the campsite. Here you see Miss Sidney Maloof tracing the outlines of a teepee ring. These teepee rings extend up and down this valley for 100 or 200 yards just below the base of the cliff where Dr. Maloof's archaeology students in his class are excavating a site. Dr. Maloof, could you tell us a little bit about this operation here? Here we see students from the archaeology class at Montana State College excavating for old refuse that the Indians threw out of their teepees. This is the last part of a buffalo jump, the campsite. Uh, up above, we saw large bones from the carcasses of the animals that were left. That is, the Indians didn't see fit to use those. But here, they've broken up all of the bones into small pieces, and in amongst the bones are numerous as artifacts such as uh, arrowheads, scrapers, knives, all made out of stone. Occasionally, there are mauls that they used to pound the bones uh, to uh, get the marl out to mix with the meat to preserve it for future use. Such uh, meat was kept in a container which uh, we call nowadays a parflesh. The old French Canadians uh, named it that. Every square foot is carefully screened because some points are so small that a trowel would uh, even lose it as it was being shoveled out. <coughs> All of the site is surveyed. We had our alidade and plane table, and we surveyed at least a section of land. There are teepee rings not only in this little spot, but up on top of the jump and uh, over about a half a mile away to the left of these workers. Some rings are up on top of the cliff as well as those down here. Dr. Maloof, 
You have here in, on your uh, tripod that we have set up now, and we have it anchored down. I don't think that we're going to have any trouble with the wind. Would you just diagram and show, show us what actually happened as you have been able to reconstruct it? As a result of our works in not only this buffalo jump but in others, we find that it's roughly divided into four parts. First, there is a grazing area where the bison had to uh, feed. It's a, usually a wide area. Secondly, there is a thoroughfare. The old drive lines where stones are left even today. These drive lanes uh, had three stones or four stones that held up a post that kind of simulated a fence. Fourth, there is the jump itself. And finally, the occupation site which is usually down at the bottom of the cliff, sometimes uh, half a mile away, sometimes a few hundred yards. Then, Dr. Maloof, uh, they guided the buffalo by these drive lanes over the cliff and then down here at the bottom, killed them, and then took them on down and produced their food and other supplies. Is that correct? Precisely. Dr. Maloof, we certainly want to thank you for this very fine uh, expedition that we have had out here to this buffalo jump and to visit with your class to see some of the operations that you're carrying on in this summer school class in archaeology of Montana Indians. Well, Dr. Burlingame, what did you think of the pictures of the jump? I like them very much. Isn't that a magnificent cliff? It uh, looked as if you had everything but the buffalo. Where were they? Well, unfortunately, it's hard to get buffalo nowadays to experiment and see what they might be. Uh, running over a cliff, but however, we did think about shoving some students over that uh, didn't pass the course, but with that danger in mind, they did very excellent work. I must I say. think they would. I see you brought back some artifacts. We have cataloged about a hundred specimens so far from the sites uh, in this vicinity, including the buffalo jump, and here is a sample of some. You found various materials, I take it. Such uh, arrowheads are made out of many different kinds of materials. This particular one happens to be made out of opalized wood or petrified wood, as some people call it. This is a rather typical example of the type of arrow point found in the buffalo jump. Is there any particular significance to the shape of this point? shape, there is no indication of tribe, but it does tell us something about time. This particular one happens to be late, with notches on the side and one on the end. I see you have a very small one here. I can't quite associate this with the hunting of the buffalo. That is uh, indeed a very small one, so tiny that uh, it's almost like a little gem. This one here is uh, often called a bird point because people assume they're used for birds and yet we found this one in the buffalo jump, uh, Dr. Burlingame. Mm -hmm. Now whether that was actually used to shoot a buffalo or not, I don't know. They, there is a story about how some people uh, used to prick the buffalo to incite them and uh, over the cliff. That is, it kind of hurt them a little bit and they'd start their stampede toward the cliff. On the other hand, it might be used just to Get a buffalo. After all, the main thing for an arrow had to do is to get the shaft inside, open the flesh so that the shaft can get in there where the real damage will be done. Yes, that's right. Now I see you have uh, different types of artifacts. Well, besides arrowheads or projectile points, we found stone knives. Here is a knife. Now you might wonder how a stone like that can be used to butcher up a buffalo. And yet, uh, you can skin it, or even a stone smaller than that can be used for buffalo. You can skin it, you can cut the meat, you can sever the joint. You'll note uh, that it has chipping on both sides. Then uh, we have here a scraper, also found in the buffalo jump, flat on one side, and rounded on the other. The business end is this part right in here. Now that was used on a handle to pin down the hide and to uh, 
make them useful for clothing, sometimes parts of the skin are thicker than others, and they use the skin down. As you bring back the artifacts, uh,